Welcome everyone to ISIS Parenting's Breastfeeding Webinar and Chat. My name is Nancy Holtzman. I'm a mom and baby nurse educator, board certified lactation consultant, and board certified in pediatrics. I'm here outside of Boston, Massachusetts at ISIS Parenting's home office where I serve as the clinical content and e-learning vice president. And with me today is Katie Goldsberry, and Katie is a ISIS Parenting Program Manager, and she is going to facilitate the chat room today. So thank you, Katie, for being here. She's the mom of two uh, young children. I'm the mom of two growing children. Um, I guess I could say young adults. My kids are now uh, 18 and a half and almost 16. So uh, today I'm revisiting a topic that I've covered before in the past. Um, I'm going to try to move quickly over the bottle feeding the breastfed baby um, information and focus primarily on the scenario, the devastating anxiety producing scenario of when a mom is getting ready to go back to work and her baby uh, is either an adamant or a passive bottle refuser. The baby will not take the bottle and the return to work is staring her uh, down and it's a very anxiety producing situation when uh, you have pumped milk and you know that you're returning to work and uh, you're anxious about what's going to happen. So I am starting this webinar with some assumptions um, that uh, people that are attending are uh, breastfeeding, perhaps pumping, and uh, are eventually planning to feed the milk to the baby by bottle either um, once in a while so that you can go get your hair cut or on a regular basis because you're going back to work. Um, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. There are a couple of links here that are live links you can click on and uh, these will give you quite a bit more information than I'm going to go into in detail today about getting ready to express and store your milk, um, all of the logistics for pumping and increasing milk production when you're pumping, troubleshooting and problem solving pumping, uh, returning to work as a, as a nursing mom. So there's a lot more information available uh, that I'm not going to be covering today. Today we're going to talk about uh, again the assumption that you are getting ready to go back to work, you will want or need to have expressed milk available for your baby and your baby will therefore want and need to take it and that may or may not be happening. So when you do transition back to work you want it to go easily for everybody. You want your baby to be as happy as possible um, and settled and you want them to uh, be able to be nourished when you're not there and to be able to explore their environment and make some friends with their little baby playmates and bond with their caregiver. You want your caregiver to be uh, happy and relaxed and to greet you at the door with thumbs up and say, hey, your baby had a great day. Uh, not your baby cried for four hours and only took half an ounce. Um, you don't need that extra You work as a team with your child care provider, uh, a very common scenario where um, child care providers are, are, are accustomed to seeing formula fed babies with six and seven and eight ounce bottles and you're showing up with these very carefully measured uh, four and one quarter ounce breast milk uh, bottles and the caregiver says the baby's still hungry, the baby needs more milk, yada, yada, yada. So how do you deal with all those types of situations? That's what's in this child care caregivers and breast milk webinar. I'm not going to get into that today. Um, but in the perfect world, you would give birth, your baby would crawl out, would wave hi mom, climb up your abdomen, latch onto your breast, and you would just go off nursing happily into the distance. And it would be nice if it worked that way all the time. It doesn't, uh, of course. And there may be many reasons why you need to begin expressing milk and or supplementing or giving the bottle very early on. But again, today I want to focus on uh, when the breastfeeding relationship is established, how then do you go about introducing and integrating pumping and when and how do you introduce the bottle? How can you feed the baby the bottle so that uh, you're stacking the deck for the best odds that your baby will be able to eventually take the bottle readily and easily but still be able to go back to the breast and primarily breastfeed. So in other words, uh, feed the baby without 
damaging the breastfeeding relationship. That's what we're talking about. So in the perfect world, um, if you can just focus on getting breastfeeding established up and running for the first two weeks and try not even to worry about uh, pumping and bottles and so on, if you don't have to during the first two to three weeks, then try not to uh, worry about that and get involved in that uh, until around week two or three. I would say around week two or three if you're eager, interested and in a big hurry, uh, and around week three to four if um, it's something that you're planning to do but it's not like you're chomping at the bit to get started. So around week three, I'll just use that as the ballpark, around week three that is a very good time to begin dabbling with the pump, get into a routine where you're pumping uh, each day, perhaps one once a day in the morning after breastfeeding, depending on the volume of milk you're able to express at that point, you may want to add a second pumping later on in the day, or you may want to breastfeed your baby on one breast and then double pump afterwards. And uh, if you are able uh, to express with one with one pumping session or with two combined pumping sessions throughout the day, um, to be able to express a volume of milk that might be somewhere between uh, one and a half to three ounces, as an example. Um, then you can begin to do that regularly, put that in the refrigerator, and that will be the milk that you can then use to introduce the bottle. So introduce the pump around week three-ish and introduce the bottle shortly after. By week three to four, uh, around week four, that's a good time to begin uh, introducing a bottle of expressed milk to get the baby accustomed. Um, Doing that early is a very good idea, uh, introducing the bottle sometime around week three or four because sucking is still voluntary at that, excuse me, sucking is still uh, reflexive at that stage and it's not until later, five, six, and seven weeks old that suckling becomes far more voluntary and so um, a baby that is three or four weeks old is more likely to take to the bottle with a little bit less disruption um, and a little less protest. Now I know that we have a few moms that are in the room today who have four week old babies that are having difficulty with the bottle and we're going to address that, but I will say that's a little um, that's a little more unusual. Typically, when the bottle is introduced before week five, the baby typically takes to the bottle uh, with just a little bit of coaxing or very easily. Getting into the routine, uh, people always ask, "Well, what bottle do you recommend?" Um, a lot of talk about bottles, and I just want to clarify that really the bottle itself hardly matters. Most of the time when people are talking about bottles, they're actually talking about the nipple or the teat on top of the bottle. And that actually is what matters a whole lot. So there's a difference in flow rates, there's a difference in shapes, there's a difference in rigidity. Um, when it comes to choosing the bottle, the shape and the color of the bottle doesn't matter a whole lot. What screws on top is what matters a bit and we're going to talk more about the importance of a slow flow bottle nipple um, and um, paying attention to the shape of the bottle nipple and what your baby's uh, lips, tongue, and mouth is doing on the bottle nipple and the base. One piece of equipment you do need is a bottle brush that has a little nipple attachment and that is both for your pump parts and for your baby bottles, pacifiers, and toys. Your bottle brush should be separate from uh, the brushes or the scrubbers that you use for your dishes uh, and your regular dish soap is fine and you can wash these things with hot soap and water, scrub them well, rinse them well, and let them air dry. That is sufficient for washing your pump parts and your bottle feeding paraphernalia. Um, there's a lot of marketing out there and um, every bottle maker will tell you that uh, their bottle nipple is more like mom and if only it were this easy to fool a baby. But don't fool yourself. Your baby is not going to be fooled. You don't need to um, try to find the bottle that is most like mom because um, the baby knows the difference between a uh, silicone or latex or firm plastic bottle nipple, the way it works, the way it feels, the way they're held, the way it smells, the way you smell, the way the caregiver is holding them and so on. Um, 
the goal is not to fool or fake out the baby. The goal is to try to figure out a method, a tool, an apparatus, and a way to get your baby nourished when you're not able to breastfeed your baby. Um, and um, I've, I've done this uh, similar webinar going into a lot more detail about bottle feeding the breastfed baby. Um, but again, today I really want to just get right to the, um, the meat of the matter, the baby that will not take the bottle. But if you're interested in um, the logistics of bottle feeding in terms of um, how the suck, swallow, breathe works and what's actually going on in the baby's mouth and more information about the various bottles and so on, again, I encourage you to use this link and watch um, the more detailed Bottle Feeding the Breastfed Baby webinar. As I said, your baby's not fooled. There's a big difference between this and this. This is tactile. This is a relationship. This is a connection. This is a way to reconnect at the end of the workday. Um, there's a lot more going on in these pictures than simply transfer of milk from uh, one uh, vessel to the baby's digestive tract. So a bottle will not replicate it, um, but that's okay. The bottle is a facilitation tool, just like the pump is a facilitation tool to allow you to continue your breastfeeding relationship. When you are there, you can breastfeed, and when you're not there, you can express milk, and someone else can feed the baby the milk, and that will allow you both to continue your breastfeeding relationship longer. Um, okay, I'm going to quickly go through this stuff. Again, I encourage you to watch the Bottle Feeding the Breastfed Baby webinar for a lot more detail on, on this type of information. A bottle nipple, um, we call these uh, super stimulus because it's long and firm and solid and present in the baby's mouth. And if you have a soft, mushy uh, breast with a flatter nipple um, and the baby is used to very... Um, uh, fleshy mom and then they get this uh, hard uh, piece of rubber pushed into their mouth, they may get very gaggy and oral defensive. It may feel very, very different from them. So uh, particularly if your baby is young, you can start off by uh, using your fingers to massage the baby's licks, lips and cheek. You can use the bottle nipple to trace um, their bottom lip or stroke from the nose in a straight line down the top lip down to the uh, chin line and see if they will open their mouth, relax their mouth a little bit. Bit. Um, you can try the rooting reflex. Uh, basically, what you're trying to do is see if the baby will uh, allow you in or make, make an attempt to latch onto the nipple, the bottle nipple himself. Um, what you don't want to do is push the nipple into the baby's mouth, make the baby gag, uh, make the baby use his tongue to thrush, to thrust out, arch, um, and become um, uh, oral defensive, that really creates negative associations. And I think this, the hardest thing is when you see um, a, a partner and a baby struggling over bottle feeding and the baby is red-faced and crying and arching and the bottle keeps being pushed back into the baby's awareness. And that's just reinforcing a negative association over and over again, that the bottle is something that the baby doesn't want and they, they're, you know, it's persisting and being pushed into the baby's awareness. So, um, de-stress that scenario by, by stopping for a day, perhaps, and then um, we're going to talk a little bit about how to start all over again. Now, typically with a bottle feeding, it's not about going to the store and buying 50 different bottle nipples until you magically find the one that's going to work. I would say it certainly makes sense to try a few, but ultimately you want to stick with the one you've had the, the most success with or some success with. Um, and um, let's see, let me find my arrow. No, that's not it. Pointer. Okay, so uh, these are orthodontic nook nipples. They look funny on the outside, but um, they kind of sort of look a little bit more like what uh, the mom's areola and nipple does look like on the inside. Um, what I do like about these is that they have a big wide base. One point I want to make here is that um, there are both, um, there, are, there are different types of nipples and you'll find that like a silicone nipple, um, may feel softer um, and squishier and one like this may feel firmer um, and harder and your baby may have a preference. So even here 
is very, very long. And um, for a baby that has a sensitive gag reflex, this is really going to do a number on them. So uh, different nipples do have different shapes, and you want to look at the um, the base of the nipple for a wide base. You want to be aware that the shaft of the nipple has a certain length and that you don't want the baby latching onto the shaft. You want uh, the nipple deeply in the baby's mouth and their lips flanged out the sides here. Um, and um, you don't want them just sucking on the tip either. Okay. talking about uh, what the baby does if the baby is taking a bottle. Breast, a bottle feeding to protect the breastfeeding means avoiding a scenario where the baby is learning bad habits at the bottle that then they will bring back to the breast that don't translate well for breastfeeding. So I think we can all agree uh, that a baby who is, um, who is shallow on the bottle nipple here uh, or has their lips pursed, or is chewing on the tip of the nipple, uh, or clamping if it's a, if the milk is flowing very quickly, uh, and they're clamping on the bottle to control the flow. None of those things are going to translate well when bottle feeding. You want the jaw uh, dropped and wide open. You want the lips flanged out along the base of the nipple. You want the mouth nice and open and and uh, you know fishy mouth, just like when breastfeeding. Okay, so here's a better picture. Um, this the baby's being invited. The baby is is uh, opening wide. That's called a nice gape, uh, anticipating the bottle coming in. Um, and here you can see, just like with breastfeeding, a nice wide open mouth. This lip could be flanged out a little bit more, but again, it's not a tight mouth. The jaws dropped and so on. Um, Use the rooting reflex, wait to be invited in. Aim high, so aim for the roof of the mouth. Imagine um, sucking your thumb. When you suck your thumb, you push your thumb against the roof of the mouth. And babies often need to feel something against the, the top uh, of the mouth, not too far back, because that can elicit the gag reflex. But when you, are, when you are allowing the bottle nipple to be drawn into the baby's mouth, tilt the angle the nipple a little bit so it is touching toward the roof of the baby's mouth. Their tongue goes under it, and that can help them um, encourage sucking. Now, if the baby does allow the bottle nipple to come into the mouth, one little trick you can try for the baby that's fairly reluctant to drink from the bottle is what I call the, um, the tease remove. So you know how sometimes the baby is sleeping at the breast and you try to take them off the breast and as soon as you put your finger there and break the seal and, and draw them away, they start sucking frantically like, no, 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 I wasn't done. Uh, or same thing, when they start losing the pacifier when they're deeply asleep, they'll start frantically sucking and it falls out of their mouth and you know they wake up and cry. So. Um, that's one little thing you can try is if you feel them applying a little bit of suction to the bottle nipple, draw the bottle nipple out just a little bit and see if they start sucking much harder to try to pull it back in. Um, that, can, that can sometimes work nicely. There are, as I mentioned uh, in, my, in my experience, two specific types of bottle refusing babies. There's the adamant bottle refuser who who turns beet red and screams bloody murder and arches even when they begin to see the bottle coming their way if it's you know uh, you're sitting down with the bottle they're already starting to fuss um, or you put it near their lips or near their mouth or you try to put it in their mouth and they're fighting the whole way then there's the passive bottle refuser and that's the baby who will allow the bottle nipple into his mouth he'll play with it he'll, he'll chew it he'll hang out with it but he doesn't really seem to know what to do with it he doesn't actually latch on or transfer milk very much. Uh, he may chew and slurp and the milk may drip and be very messy and then after a little while he'll either get bored, frustrated, or hungry and start to cry because he's not getting a meal. So um, if you have, um, I think a passive bottle refuser is, is a slightly easier uh, animal to deal with because at least you're halfway there. They don't have a negative association necessarily. Um, so some of the tricks that we're going to get through uh, in, a, in the next minute uh, often help uh, the passive bottle refuser pretty readily within usually within a week. Um, and then the adamant bottle refuser, really the same techniques can work. You just want to make sure that you don't reinforce a negative association. You definitely don't want to get into a fighting match with your baby about taking the bottle. Um, quick comment about flow rate. If the bottle 
if the bottle is flowing rapidly. So um, a, a milk that's coming out of the bottle fairly quickly, um, if you couple that with uh, mom's milk supply being uh, marginal uh, or, um, or you know, kind of uh, borderline, and then you have a baby who begins to scream at the breast because they are used to getting rapid milk very quickly from the bottle and then they fuss at the breast um, and then you assume you don't have enough milk so you follow up with the bottle, um, that can become a downward spiral because uh, as the baby gets more and more bottles, if you're not doing a lot of pumping, your body is not stimulated to be making more milk. So they have to work harder at the breast to get less milk when um, the bottle comes their way and it's flowing easily and quickly, that can again um, become an issue. So uh, slow flow bottle nipples are really what we're talking about for the breast milk fed baby. Um, that's your best method to maintain a better relationship uh, at the breast and to help you out both in terms of the volume of milk that the baby requests or demands what's, once they are taking the bottle well uh, and um, allows the baby to hopefully go back and forth between the breast and bottle easier because they don't get accustomed to laying back and letting the milk flow from the bottle. Instead, uh, they're an active participant in the bottle feeding. They're working and sucking for each mouthful of milk um, and uh, um, they do the same at the breast. So slower is better. A slow flow bottle nipple, just because your baby is uh, turning four or five months old, doesn't mean that you have to stop using the zero to three month bottle nipples. In fact, uh, you can keep using a newborn bottle nipple uh, indefinitely. Uh, the reason to move to a faster flow nipple is simply if the baby or the caregiver is getting too frustrated with the length of time it's taking to do a complete bottle feeding. But it really should take somewhere between 20 to 30 minutes to do a complete bottle feeding, 30 minutes is not too long to do a full bottle feeding. That allows the baby's brain to realize that his belly is being fed and it makes the same four ounces of milk in the bottle ever so much more satisfying. If they're knocking down four ounces of milk in seven minutes, chances are they're still going to fuss and look for more milk. The caregiver is going to assume the baby's still hungry and you know give another two ounces of milk and so on. Um, whereas the same four ounces of milk, if it were given in a nice paced, upright, responsive bottle feeding position with a slow flow bottle nipple and it took 20 to 30 minutes for that same four ounces of milk to be, be taken, it would be ever so much more satisfying. So that's what we're going for. Um, just because the baby finishes the volume of milk, so that's what my, my, milk, my uh, meal tray here is to, is to indicate, um, a nice full meal. So just because you finish a nice full lunch does not necessarily mean it wasn't the right amount, you're still hungry, and you should have had more. So your baby may drink the four ounces of milk, um, and if that keeps them content and holds them over for two to three hours, it was the right amount. Just because they're finishing a bottle does not mean they should be having more. And again, I refer you back to the Child Care Caregivers and Breast Milk webinar um, to work on some of these uh, communications and understanding where the caregiver is coming from and trying to help the caregiver understand a little bit more about breast milk and breast milk fed babies. Um, because breast milk fed babies generally start, don't go uh, to six and seven and eight ounce bottles of breast milk ever. Um, they don't they don't need that large volume of breast milk um, and my chocolate chip cookies here are here to demonstrate um, the fact that when something is warm and delicious and offered to you that you like, you may choose to eat more of it than perhaps you metabolically need to. So just because the baby guzzled through four ounces of milk and then the caregiver offered them another two ounces and they guzzled through that too, doesn't mean that metabolically your baby needs six ounces of breast milk every three hours. Just like you wave this plate of warm chocolate chip cookies under my nose and I eat two and then you urge me to take another, so I do, and then you leave the room so I take yet another. It doesn't mean that metabolically I need four warm chocolate chip cookies, although that would be nice. Okay, paste responsive upright bottle feeding. This is how breast milk fed babies, breastfeeding babies should be fed. And in fact, this is how all bottle feeding babies should be fed. But I'm talking about um, 
breastfeeding babies today. So again, uh, 30 minutes, babies in an upright position, not laid back, reclined in the arms with the bottle coming in uh, on top in a dominant position. The milk is going to flow too quickly in that position and the baby has only two choices. They can choke or they can chug. So which do you think they'll choose? And that's why babies go through a large volume of milk very, very quickly. So in, in uh, these paste bottle feeding positions, the baby is fairly upright and the bottle is fairly horizontal. See that? The baby is not laying on his back. Uh, the baby is sitting fairly upright and the bottle is fairly horizontal to the baby, the nipple full of milk. But in this position, the, the milk is going to flow slower by gravity. The baby has more control over the flow rate and can take a breather. And this allows you to have frequent pauses for burping and for interaction. And this is what allows you to slow down that bottle feeding a little bit. So taking pauses is the equivalent of putting your fork down in a restaurant and enjoying the atmosphere and the conversation of your dining companion. That's that's the way to do it, the slow flow movement, slow, slow food movement. OK, so getting to the nitty gritty now, what do you do when your baby will not take the bottle? So here's. Uh, I'm going to go step by step on some considerations. First consideration, in general, I'm not concerned about the temperature of milk for most babies. seconds to melt that ring of fat and gently swirl it back in. The baby can drink that milk cool or cold. It will make everybody's life easier. But when you have a baby who is refusing the bottle, I do recommend heating the milk. And surprisingly, babies that refuse the bottle seem to do better when the milk is quite warm. So usually you're warming milk and you kind of have it be tepid or, or uh, lukewarm. But for the baby that will not take a bottle, try making the milk even a little bit warmer. Um, obviously not, not hot that it's going to uh, scald or harm the baby, but Think of it um, definitely on the warmer side of warm. Um, and somebody had said that their partner is trying to offer the baby the bottle in the evening and it's not going well. Yes. So the evening is the hardest time of day for most babies. And um, parents, too, also have a, a high uh, frustration uh, threshold. In the evening, everybody's tired and a little bit grumpy. And um, it, for a baby who's cranky, it may not be a good time to try something that's new and stressful. So 7.30 in the evening may not be a desirable time. Instead, how about 7.30 in the morning? Mornings are usually uh, a happier time for everybody. And um, that may be a better time to try the bottle. So perhaps try on a weekend morning uh, and see how that goes. I'm not saying that there's something magic about 7.30. I'm just using that as an example um, to kind of flip it. Don't try in the evening when the baby's cranky. Try in the morning when everybody is a little bit more patient and the baby's usually in a better mood. Next thing to think about is um, your position. And uh, I'll just go step by step by these things. So um, bottle feeding position. You may think that sitting in the nursing chair, holding the baby in a somewhat nursing position, having partner drape one of mom's t-shirts over her or him or something like that will work well. And um, I'm telling you it may, but uh, I would actually consider trying a very different position. So you can see in this picture here, um, I don't know if you saw that, that was freaky. Uh, in this picture here, where's my pointer? Come on, pointer. Never mind. Katie, can you work on that? If you can get my pointer, that'd be nice. Um, in the first picture on the left hand side, the partner is uh, either sitting or standing, and the baby is um, his, the baby's chest. The baby's back is against partner's chest. So in other words, the baby is kind of um, sitting on partner's arm or lap facing out. And that's, thank you, Katie, that's the position I'd like. Um, and so try try that. So the baby is sitting up facing out with the bottle coming in. It's not a breastfeeding position at all. And in this position, uh, instead of just sitting on the couch, because you know that most babies really don't like it if you're just sitting down, <laughs> they want you to do a lot more work than that. So instead of sitting, maybe try uh, standing up and walking 
walking around the house or sitting on the physio ball and bouncing again with the baby sitting up facing out and the bottle coming in movement and distraction uh, is the weather nice where you live take the baby outside sit the baby up face the baby out and be outside uh, do you need more distraction inside sit on the physio ball and uh, this will be the, pretty much the only time I suggest that you sit in front of the TV with your baby and let the baby look at the TV um, but movement and distraction can work wonders if the baby allows the bottle nipple into the mouth remember aim to the roof of the mouth practice that little tease remove um, if you feel the baby latch on again try some big movement walk around the room see if that movement and distraction keeps the baby sucking babies get into a rhythm of suck swallow breathe suck swallow breathe sometimes one suck leads to the swallow breathe and then another suck and before they know it they've downed half an ounce um, this other position here with the car seat position, I call this the disembodied arm. So your baby's in a car seat, a bouncer seat, um, a bumbo, whatever, sitting up, facing out, uh, with the feeder or the adult or the mom or the dad or the partner behind the baby. Uh, sitting behind the baby with the disembodied arm coming around the baby with the bottle like this. Um, is the baby sitting in front of the TV? Uh, I don't want to say that, but yes, the baby could be. Um, again, these are all temporary transient things. I'm not saying that you always will need to feed your baby with a disembodied arm, but do it step by step. So the first step is to allow the baby to um, let the bottle nipple come into the mouth, especially if they're an adamant refuser. The second step is will the baby latch and transfer for even just a little bit of milk, a few tentative suck, swallow, breathes. The third step is to see, can you get the baby to drink half an ounce to an ounce as you walk around the room, as you sit and bounce, um, as you distract them somehow. Um, and then the fourth step is, can they do uh, an ounce or two of milk that way? And then the fifth step gradually is, you know, are they now getting used to the bottle and you can actually bottle feed them in a more uh, standard typical way because that's usually how it happens is once they get more familiar and accustomed to the bottle um, then they can sort of translate those those bottle feeding skills to other other caregivers um, other situations other positions and so on it's kind of getting over that hump and being willing to drink from the bottle and learning how to do it because it really is a different skill set imagine um, someone presented you with a an eight week old baby who's been exclusively bottle fed and uh, would you really think that you could just stick the baby near your breast or at your breast and that baby would latch on and immediately know how to nurse no it's a completely different feeding skill um, we just think that because bottles are so ubiquitous with babies all babies should know how to take a bottle and it's really flabbergasting that you have a baby who can't latch on to a bottle um, but they are two different skill sets this is my number one tip. This is the one that typically works. Um, this is called intermittent bottle by mom, or I call it intermittent bottle by mom, IBBM. Um, and um, the way this works is a very uh, think outside the box technique. In this technique, it's mom that's doing the practice because mom has the most opportunity throughout the day and is doing most of the feedings. The baby associates feeding with mom and mom has patience um, and um, opportunity. What you do is you take a couple of ounces of freshly expressed breast milk and you put it next to uh, the chair or wherever you're doing your typical feeding in the morning um, and you sit down and you latch your baby on and you start breastfeeding. And after a minute or two when the baby's relaxed and they've had some milk and nobody's frantic and so on, you just substitute the bottle for the breast. And if the baby pushes it away or refuses it, no big deal. You act like you could care less and you just put the bottle down and you put the baby back on the breast and you let the baby nurse for another minute or two or three or four. And then again, you do the same thing. You just interrupt the breastfeeding and you offer the bottle. And if the baby takes the bottle for a suck or two or an ounce, great. And if the baby doesn't take the bottle, not a big deal. You just put it down and put the baby back on the breast. So this is intermittent bottle by mom. You're breastfeeding and intermittently you're
the point is um, that you create no stress around it and you're simply saying you can get milk here you can get milk there it's all milk it's all good it's all mom you don't want it here from the bottle no problem here's the breast now if the baby ends up not taking uh, any or much of the milk during that first feeding okay put the bottle back in the fridge and bring it out again two or three or four or five hours later the next feeding that you're home and you have the opportunity to work on this warm that milk remember we talked about warming the milk very well warm it up sit down and do the whole thing all over again mostly starting off with the breast offer the bottle uh, see what happens no go okay back to the breast um, and then interrupt with the bottle again so several times through each nursing session you're bringing the bottle back in and with no pressure seeing if you can coax the baby to take some bottle work on that at least three times a day refrigerate and reuse that bottle at the end of the day uh, if there's still milk left in there you'll toss it but um, refrigerate it, reuse it uh, over the course of, say, a, a, an eight or eight hour period. Um, and really try to work on this three times a day because I'm telling you that this really is the number one method that ends up working for um, the adamant ref bottle refusing baby. First, you work on, on uh, getting rid of that negative association, but uh, once they have, uh, you know, once they will um, tolerate having the bottle near them or in their mouth, either they suck it or they don't suck it. As soon as they start getting upset about it, you just shift them back over to the breast. Intermittent bottle by mom. Now, some other uh, things to think about. It may it may seem um, uh, obvious, but I bring it up because um, make sure that you're checking the milk that you're offering to the baby. It's not uh, common, but certainly uh, I see often parents that have moms that have high lipase in their milk the milk actually has um, a very bad smell and or taste to it and the baby does not care for it there are also um, babies that are very discerning between freshly expressed milk milk that's been expressed and sitting in the fridge for five days and milk that's been frozen so um, do check the milk carefully that you're offering to the baby nobody will miss uh, nasty sour curdled disgusting milk from perfectly fine fresh breast milk uh, we all know what gross milk looks and smells like and it's clumpy and it separates and it doesn't blend back well together unlike freshly expressed or frozen milk which does separate but does gently swirl back together uh, as soon as the layer of fat is warmed now if the baby is over well, five months or so um, this is an outside the box thing you don't see me recommending this across the board but one thing you can try is to take uh, an ounce of white grape juice and an ounce of water in the bottle and see if your baby is willing to drink something else from the bottle that's not expressed milk um, it also you know just gives you if you're if you're um, very cautious about um, you know, not wanting to waste your breast milk. Uh, again, I would just put one or two ounces of breast milk in the bottle while you're working on, on bottle feeding so that you're not, you know, you're not uh, worrying about five ounces of milk that your baby's not going to drink anyway. Uh, but um, this is another technique that you can try with the bottle to see if it goes uh, any differently. Um, if your baby is uh, over five and a half to six months old you can introduce and advance solid foods as long as your baby seems receptive to that you can move forward quickly with solid foods again as long as you're following your baby's leads so that a caregiver can give your baby oatmeal mixed with breast milk for example if you're not there um, and then I use this picture to demonstrate my analogy uh, of um, the the boy on the bike and um, and the scary dog so say you've got a little boy who um, doesn't really like to ride his two-wheeler but his dad is really into it took off the training wheels so the, the little boy will show dad that he can do it and will pedal down the the driveway and around the mailbox and come back up but he does not really like to do it but the day that there's a big scary dog bearing down on him he can get on the bike and pedal all the way down the street fast because he knows how to ride the bike that's very different than a kid who is looking at the bike but has never figured out how to ride it and then all of a sudden there's a big scary dog bearing down on him so that's the difference between the baby who can drink from the bottle but just doesn't like it very much and the baby who really has not yet shown the ability to latch on and transfer milk from the bottle so wait starving that baby out or assume that if you left for the day the baby would eventually cave he's being stubborn and will take the bottle um, if the baby has not been able to transfer milk from the bottle uh, 
routinely, um, I would not assume that the baby is just being stubborn. There is, a, you know, a learning a learning curve there. Okay, we're almost wrapping up. Um, here's some other very well-meaning pieces of advice. The other one I didn't cover here is very often people will say to moms whose babies won't take a bottle, oh, that's okay, not all babies need to take a bottle. Um, he can drink from a cup or you can spoon feed him or you can reverse cycle feed, which means um, you can bed share and have the baby nurse uh, many times overnight instead of nursing during the day and so on. And, and those things are all true. People do those things, but um, many women, they're going back to work full time and their baby is three months old and they're sending their baby to a corporate daycare center. And, um, you know, the daycare center is not going to um, want to or be able to use an eyedropper or a spoon to feed your baby uh, breast milk drop by drop. Um, and you may um, need to spend your day arguing a case in court and don't want to um, be up nursing every hour and a half at night uh, indefinitely as well. So it may be important to you that your baby learn to take the bottle. Um, and uh, I'm here to tell you that about 95% of the time, it can and will happen with patience and with determination and uh, with some good techniques. And um, I'll review some of those in a minute. Um, it's very common to have a mom who's very anxious because the baby will not take the bottle or won't take the bottle easily or readily. Um, that's common. What's not common is the baby who ultimately transitions to a childcare uh, environment or to a caregiver at home and uh, two weeks later is still not taking the bottle. That does happen, but it's very, very, very rare. Um, the first situation is very common. The second situation is very unusual. So. Um, Sippy cup uh, suggestions, yeah. So those suggestions I mentioned, um, they are they are possible, but they're not always practical. Um, certainly, from about five months, you can introduce a sippy cup. Um, but even at five and six months, um, it's very it's slow. Um, it can be messy, and ultimately, the baby ends up taking rather small volumes of of milk through the sippy cup. Um, so I do encourage people whose babies are younger than five months old uh, to continue working on the bottle feeding if that is their goal because um, it's really not until a baby is maybe seven, eight, nine months old before they start drinking um, you know, what amounts to be several ounces uh, of milk or water from a sippy cup if, if, uh, if they're cup drinkers. Um, and you can return back to one of those other two webinars I mentioned earlier for more information on introducing a sippy cup, cup feeding, and so on. These other two um, products I just showed down below because uh, on the off chance, if you do have a baby who happily takes a pacifier, there are two products here um, that might interest you, the Podi and the Pacifeeder, and both of these have a remote bottle um, and then kind of a long um, flexible straw, and then they end up in a pacifier at the baby's mouth. So, um, you know, any port in a storm, if you think that might help, it's something to know about. But in general, the thing that I find helps the most is um, working on this technique, uh, switching, you know, warming the milk, trying it at different times of the day, using that movement and distraction and position change, but having mom work on offering the bottle numerous times throughout the day in the middle of breastfeeding sessions. And several people, when I was talking about this on Twitter this morning, um, many, many people, uh, chimed in and said that, um, you know, that they had used these tips from the previous webinar and, and from um, other resources that I shared and had very good success with it. So listen, it's not 100%. I can't guarantee that um, I can help your baby uh, learn to drink the bottle. But again, I would say that about 95% of, of uh, the reluctant, uh, passive or adamant bottle feeding breastfed babies ultimately can and do uh, learn to take the bottle and this is the best method that typically works. It may take one to two weeks um, to, to, uh, to have a technique like this um, really begin to work well, but give it patience because typically it does. Okay, um, wrapping up, um, come back next week. You know that the link is the same, all the archives.
helps justify um, all of the time I spend on this and Katie's time and so on. Um, please also um, show, <laughs> show you care by signing up for our newsletters. These are live links here. Please do like us on Facebook. These are, um, these are statistics that get tracked here um, at ISIS just like at any other um, you know, uh, company and and um, this is one of my roles is to is to grow the um, the ISIS brand and to build awareness and to make friends all over the country like you guys. Um, so I'm doing you know I'm 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 trying to do that and I'm encouraging you to please help by uh, signing up for our newsletters, liking us on Twitter, on Facebook, um, uh, checking out our blog, and following us on Twitter, etc. And telling your friends. So if you're on Hello Bee or Baby Center or um, you know any of these many different uh, message boards and so on. Please refer people to the ISIS webinars, to our website, to our blog posts and so on. And uh, you will have my uh, lifelong um, appreciation for that. Um, many questions. Don't have time for them. Um, I don't know. Uh, Katie, is there anybody who I simply um, you know, some <laughs> desperate crying mom out there. Um, otherwise, I will try, I will look at these and hope that many of them got answered. And I do think perhaps next week I will do all Q&A um, because it looks like there's lots of questions and I didn't get a chance to uh, get to them. So next Thursday at 12 noon, I will do a full 30 minutes of your Q&A with no planned topic. Katie says she thinks I covered everything. That's great. Um, thank you all so much. We had a great full room. I see lots of um, familiar faces and some new ones. And um, I wish you all a wonderful nurturing week with your babies. Good health to everybody. And perhaps I will see you uh, on Tuesday at the sleep webinar with my friend Megan Casano. Katie, thank you so much for your fabulous moderation. And uh, goodbye, everyone.